the staircase. Into a strange doorway. It's really bright. You look like you have wings, Mona. Another house in Mondstadt? What are we doing in my house? Your house? This is your house? My, how unexpected. I heard Lady Magistus lived a modest life. But this abode... Dude, this room is huge. This is great. There obviously must be separate rooms for the amenities and the facilities like a kitchen, but this is great. Just look at the detailing on that wall and the light shining through the windows. This is a great place. Look at the labels on these books on the ground. Only one of its kind? 990,000 mora? Hey, that's super expensive. Why is there a label on the book? There are so many expensive looking hardcovers over here. So this is what an astrologist's room looks like. This room is great. I love all the books. I want it. The rooms are exquisitely designed. This place must be very expensive. Simone is rich. It was my misconception this entire time. Hey, I'm just occasionally out of Mora, that's all. I never said I was a pauper. You're not? Oh, so what about those times I treated you to meals and had you over to my place for dinner? Mean Fräulein, mind your phrasing. No, no. Oz, you know, Fischl doesn't seem to be the problem here now that we've gotten through our barriers. You seem to be the problem here, Oz. Get out of the party. You weren't invited. You're stuffing up Fischl. We want Amy back and you're kind of fucking her over. <clears throat> Thou wert blessed with the coveted opportunity to enter the palace of the Imanach Reich and meet with the Kaiser and Kaiserin de Verertelung. Or hast thou conveniently forgotten this magnificent occasion? Oh, yes! The stew and cold cuts your mother made were heavenly. Mm. I could go for some more of that right now. Wait, her parents are still alive? So she didn't go through any childhood trauma? Oh my god. Then what the fuck happened to Fischl? Usually this kind of mental problem stems from trauma. She had no trauma. That just makes her even worse as a character. Lady Magistus, this is not the time for such things. Is that Mondstadt cuisine? I want to try some. I heard Mondstadt has lots of local delicacies, especially meat dishes. Hmm. Then I shall extend to you the honor of meeting the Kaiser and Kaiserin with me on a future occasion. Really? Hey, we should go too. Now that you mention it, it has been a while since I visited a friend's house. I shall gladly oblige. Oh, but shouldn't we bring some sort of gift? Why are we getting ahead of ourselves? Can we finish Mona's Mirage, please? Those two are very kind and understanding. So please, don't worry about that. Just bring yourselves. Yeah, they'd have to be with a daughter like that. Living in her own head. You seriously have to try her mom's cold cut platter. It's a specialty or something. <laughs> anyway, it's simply delightful. Not to interrupt, but perhaps we should start working on the puzzle at hand? Ever since I entered this place, I have found myself most preoccupied with that ornament. Oh, right. What do you mean, oh, right? What the hell's wrong with you people? Touch. Yeah, my mother always told me not to touch strange things. Alrighty. Follow the star. What star? I don't have a star. Okay, we're apparently following the star of the destination, but I don't have a star. Are able to understand the most complex signs among the stars. And because of this, they are not allowed to show any I can't arrogance. Jump. What? If one believes that astrology grants them unlimited power, they will face banishment by the stars. In the past, I was ignorant enough to think that I understood all fates in the universe. Maybe it was some form of punishment. But I became lost. I'm so confused. I couldn't see the stars any longer. Oh, I just run at the wall and pretend there's a star there? Okay. Running at the wall. 
I still don't see any star that I'm following. Other than myself. Do I count? Are we just going in a circle? You should not get confused. If you should become confused one day, not even a star will be able to help you then. Sure. That's what the old hag said. We astrologists can't predict our own fate, but today, those words seem to carry a different meaning. I lost the star again. Oh, there you are. I understand now that people won't always follow a beacon's guiding light. Even though the way forward may be dark and dangerous. And that's a them problem, Mona. You gotta accept that you can't help everybody. Forge ahead. If they don't want to help themselves, I'll let them blindly bumble Fate into the darkness. It's called such precisely because it cannot be altered. Or reversed. Uh you what now? Oh god. Whew. You had me panicking for a second there, buddy. Not gonna lie. I was expecting something to be under my feet, but then I fell, and then I panicked, and then I hit ground. I understand the governing laws of the universe, and have glimpsed secrets between heaven and earth. Observing it is enough for me. There's, there are no perfect legends, and no heroes that can save everyone. Instead of dwelling on my helplessness, he sees my own destiny. I'm seizing it. Right into the ground. Looks like a Picasso painting. Huh? Picasso? Monet? What a Shit. magnificent view! The one with the blue and the stars and like the castle building in the background. Is that Picasso or Monet? Picasso. Lady Magistus, I believe this is the firmest evidence yet of your immense genius. You truly are the greatest archmage in the history of the Imanachreish. Thank you. Although the Imanachreish really Speaking doesn't have that much of history. <laughs> or have many uh, astrologers and mages. <laughs> Stars like diamonds and the moon like a pearl. This is the most brilliant night sky I've ever beheld. I quite like twinkling on the ground myself. It's beautiful. The blue on the... Oh, I'm stretching. The little green lights on the ground. They're quite pretty. To call up such a mirage, Mona must have a vast and boundless sea of stars in her heart. It has been the prettiest mirage, that's for sure. Mona, what's the matter? Oh, I'm just thinking. These must be the things that we aspire to. This night sky is incredibly beautiful. In fact, I might go so far as to say it's even more beautiful than what I usually see in divinations. All the stars are in their rightful place. This is definitely my mirage. Only here can I see extraordinary sights like these. Extraordinary? Why do you say that? You know, the night sky of Tevat is truly marvelous. All the answers in the world seem to have been hidden within. When is my missing son going to be found? Do they love me or not? Will I ever recover? As your stars move across the sky, they record all your life events in their path. And among all the people in the world, a considerable number will see their stars deviate from their path. When your stars mm -hmm. are on track, it means you will be healthy, happy, and at peace. Conversely, if your stars go off track, everything will get worse. The starry sky in my divinations would never look as perfect as this. Some stars would lose their way, and others would fall. I wish everyone could be happy and stay on track. To this end, I offer advice and tell the truth. I know it's useless. All fates are already revealed in the night sky with mine too, just another among them. I can't change anything, even so. Outside of astrology, outside of the words of truth, I still cling to the wisp of an irrational fantasy. We must all live within the confines of reality, but... Call me presumptuous. But I still believe in miracles. In this vast sea of stars. There are stars for you, for me, for everybody. What are the chances of one star encountering another? Are these encounters not the most wonderful miracles in all of destiny? <laughs> I don't know. 
but within Tevat, the stars in the sky will always have a place for us. Even if astrology is resolutely rational, fate remains arbitrary, cruel, but romantic. Mona, you seem to have been in deep in thought. Have you found the answer? I think I've figured out what those stars are hiding. Now I will seize my own destiny. Okay, seize destiny. Oh, I'm seizing it. I don't know how I'm seizing it, but I'm seizing it. But none of the stars want to let me catch them. How do I seize my destiny, yo? Do I just keep running in a direction? I don't know how to seize my destiny. And it's strange that she's actually running and not smushing into the ground like water. I've reached the boundaries of this world. Okay, I don't understand how to seize my destiny. Does anyone know how to seize their destiny? This is so ambiguous. So philosophical. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, am I supposed to be following the stars? My apologies. Oh. I no longer have a path to follow. Oh dear. I don't know what I'm doing. Oop, there's another boundary. Does anybody know what I'm supposed to be doing? Do we have anything other than these terrible instructions? I don't know how to open my log, but whatever button I'm trying to hit isn't working. Is there a path I should be following? Yeah, but that doesn't take me anywhere. And then I hit a wall. So it mustn't be following those. I'm still hitting a wall. I'm so confused. And then we run out of path again. And then we hit another wall. I am so fucking confused. Could this not be more explicit? I don't get it. I'm trying to seize my destiny, but it's not working. Get here, you son of a bitch. What was I actually supposed to do? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know why it suddenly triggered. I didn't accomplish anything. Oh my God. That is one of the worst things that they could have put in this game with no navigation system, no clues or hints. There was a transparent it was terrible. Made of crystal. It was beautiful and fragile and could sing the most beautiful songs. But since mortals couldn't see it, they believed it to be a trick. How could a transparent bird possibly exist, let alone sing? When the bird heard that, it flapped its wings and flew across mountains and seas all the way to the night sky, where it turned into a star. Its brilliance was so dazzling that it illuminated everyone. It allowed all those that could see it to follow its light through the dark night, to sail through the seas under the guidance of the stars. It was born in wisdom, but trapped in ignorance. It has never voiced a complaint, for this is its destiny. Guiding people to see their destinies is the very meaning of its existence. We're back here again! So, are we completely out of the mirage? Does this look like a mirage to you, Paimon? How strange. My mirage didn't contain any hints on the Fatui or the machine. Does that mean they had nothing to do with these mirages after uh, all? Ah, we already kind of thought about 
Or perhaps these mirages are a mere consequence and not part of a process at all. Um, Paimon's lost. I mean, these mirages were not steps toward solving the mystery, but rather a direct effect of whatever's going on. Someone did something to bring the mirages into being. As they were just passive side products, it was natural that they couldn't provide us with any useful information. In other words, those mirages were only about ourselves. Hmm. Pure materializations of ourselves. Interesting. I really don't feel like there's some great discovery there. It's what I've thought since the beginning. I, I don't understand why you guys are suddenly coming to this conclusion. Hmm. Everyone, maybe we should go back to where this whole thing began. During our first day on the island, the Traveler and I checked out the Fatui camp together. We found a strange machine there, as well as some disoriented Fatui. That is correct. The researcher who spoke to us claimed that the machine was just a Fatui industrial invention. He even promised to not disturb us. Right, right! And the Cappy Cap guy looked half asleep the entire time! He kept talking nonsense! I wonder, is it possible that madness and mirages are two different outcomes of the machine's influence? If so, everything can be traced back to that damaged machine. Except for the difference in how it affects people. This, I believe, is caused by differences between the affected people themselves. I prefer to believe that the Golden Apple Up Capelago changes itself like a room of requirement. It changes itself to reflect the needs of the people there. Like the first time we came here, it was all about Cleed. To be fair, Alice physically set everything up on the challenge to find the Dodoka King, so it doesn't like really count, but I'd like to think that this island manifests in a way to help the people who visit it. That's way more interesting than that this contrived machine did it. Oh, when you put it that way, it is indeed difficult to distinguish dreams and hallucinations. So what you're saying is, the device affected us differently because we are different from the Fatui. Yes. And according to our observations over these past few days, I think the difference is that we all have stronger willpower. Well, that's a very rude generalization to make against the Fatui. They are not all the same, just as we are all not the same. There's plenty of Fatui who have strong willpower, like, hello, Harbinge as much. That's a really bad message to be sending. Yeah, I can get behind that. I can't. People with strong willpower will hallucinate instead of falling into madness. But those who break too easily can't maintain a stable mirage. In other words, we should go back to the Fatui camp and destroy that machine right away! Maybe you should find out if it really is the machine that's making these things happen before you start destroying it? You're making a lot of assumptions and leaps in logic right now. No, it should be repaired rather than destroyed. My point still stands. What main Fräulein means is that rashly destroying a machine we do not understand may lead to more serious consequences. It would be better to find a way to repair it first. Right. It pays to be cautious. If my guess is correct, a machine is capable of influencing the human brain. So we'd better tread carefully. I love how Mona's not even moving, but her boobs are bouncing up and down. Weirdest physics ever in this game. So let's go now! There's no time to waste! Okay, I'm kind of torn on the Temple of Star of the Star Latitudes. I'm really, really, really torn about this. Because on one hand, I really enjoyed it. Because I'm predisposed to like celestial based things, I like things that are about the sun, the moon and the stars, stars especially, I, I always like that kind of thing. I like the concept of astrology and astrologists like Mona in this context and I like divination. These are all things I already like. So like the layout of the, the domain of the mirage, the, the walls, the setting, the stars, like the, the shining, it's, it's all things on. that I personally like. So in that sense, that was probably my favorite mirage because it was the prettiest to me. But in terms of story and writing, it was probably one of the worst. I mean, Chignon's was pretty boring. I've got to be honest. So I wouldn't say Marona's was boring per se. It just, it didn't accomplish anything. Kazuha's, we look back on his past and help break through some of his barriers going forward. Fischl, we completely and utterly smashed through her obstacles in her own self. 
She she went through her past to discover her future. Mona's did nothing. There was no in a problem. There was no problem with her past, no problem with her current self. And then right at the end, it's like, I must seize my destiny. Like, where did that come from? There was no foreshadowing of that at all. There's, there's been no like through line through your entire story about you being conflicted, about not being able to see your own future. And yet all of a sudden you're seizing your own destiny out of the blue. It's like, what? I, I wanted a much better story and a better look into her history than that. I feel like that was a very superficial and shallow look in her past and it could have been delved into a lot deeper and had a bigger connection because it's got the framework of how other people view the divination, you know, they don't want to believe it because it, it's not a good future for them or blah, blah, blah. Like, that was a great framework and you could there's so much you could do with that. But it just kept it shallow and surface level and then we just ch ch chased a star that I couldn't catch because I couldn't see a star that I had to catch and then, and then we were done. So while it was the prettiest and most aesthetically favorable to me, closely followed by officials, it, it didn't grip me as a story because it didn't accomplish anything of, of changing Mona. She didn't come to really a big realization about herself. She didn't break through any barriers. She didn't really What's do that? much. So I think it flopped in terms of self-realization, which disappoints me. But we are getting closer to the end. We're still running out of time here. Wait, you said 10 days before. You said 10 days. So this lasts an extra day over the individual quests. Okay, so you can do the challenges a day after the quests end. God, that's is that's that's misleading. Okay, I would have gone by that time limit. Good to know, because we do need to finish this off. I don't know if we're gonna get all the, the boat challenges and stuff done for the primer gems, but hey, if that's the least of my worries, I will take that. So did we get any we've well, got a few primer gems, nothing exceptional because I'm not wishing I don't get any of these other things. Drat it. Which means we're sitting on only 62 wishes. That's kind of sad, but it is what it is. So yeah, I mean, it was cool, but not particularly deep, which is really what I was wanting of these mirages. So yeah, next time we will go head to the location of the Fadui machine and repair it, even though we have no proof that it has any correlation to what we're seeing. Hard. Whatever. Alrighty, so the quest line is practically over. Yep, it's it's on its deathbed. I kind of wish I hadn't left it this late. I, I generally try to play Genshin three times a week as opposed to two times because I get bored of it very quickly, not gonna lie. Like it's I, I'm okay playing for like an hour and a half and then it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done now. So I don't know how much is left quest-wise in this game. Sorry for this event, and I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that it's going to be more than an hour and a half, but I, I have no choice. It has to get done today. So I've kind of put myself in a corner, which is which is not the best idea. Not, not really. I, I could have I could have done this a little better, but I was too busy playing other games, and, and now here we are. So <laughs> let's get this. Oh, gosh. I do hope the Knights of Favonius are all working let's hard. Let's get this quest done. Ayaka, you're up. Oh. It didn't even let me get across. Fine. Oh, hello. Hey, look! Isn't that the same guy we saw on our first day here? It certainly is. <laughs> Everyone's gone crazy. Everyone should get out of here. Well, they'll never wake up. But I was right, my precious. <laughs> You are invincible. <laughs> what are you, Gollum? My precious. Precious? What's his precious? Uh, clearly not a ring. A miracle machine. Definitely not impossible. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking this over. So you... It makes miracles possible. And I can agree with that to an extent here with the mirages, particularly with the Menachshraik, or whatever the stupid name is. Uh, it was an embodiment of someone's desires, per se. I don't know that I'd call it a miracle. It's not changing 
reality as it currently is to a way of your liking. So unless you've done something that is uh, different from the way these man these mirages have manifested that I don't know about, in which case I'm intrigued. But if it's just what we've been experiencing, I wouldn't really call it a miracle machine. Maybe a, a therapy machine, sure. I think he's referring to that machine. No way. Really? What a drunkard. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get more of Sassy Fischl? Oh, goodness. The smell of alcohol. Main Fräulein, please allow me to fan the fumes away with my wings. Y you do that anyway because you never sit and chill. Oh, excellent. Please fan them away for me too. <laughs> uh, me, me as well. I don't like alcoholics. Certainly. I've checked the surroundings, but there's no one else here. Isn't that strange? The Fatui is a big organization, but he's the only one left at this camp. What's more, we didn't even see him the last time we were here. Well, don't forget, we've only seen two Fatui to date here. You say it's a big camp, and, and it's weird that he's the only one here, but we've only seen two people to date. Plus, the big guy, I think, was complaining about his missing brother, something like that. So possibly three people. There weren't that many people here to start off with. Even the larger gentleman from the first time is missing. I think they must be hiding somewhere. As for why they may be hiding, I'm afraid we'll have to ask him. He's, he's a bit incoherent at the moment, Kazaha. Good luck with that. But he's as drunk as Tone Deaf Bard! <sighs> Should we wait for him to sober up? Cleanse him with the Holy Spring of Punishment! <laughs> I don't think that's gonna help Fischl. Mean Fräulein means to splash him with water. I mean, I already thought of that, but if he's, if he's, if he's beyond the pale, that's not going to help. Ooh, sounds like a good idea! Let's try. Everyone takes out their water bottles and empties them over the collapse for Tui research. I don't know that you had to hey, empty a bottle. What are you going to do for hydration? You can't drink from the water, it's salt. Uh, huh? I mean, this doesn't change the fact that he's still drunk. Hey, are you one of the Fatui? Can you tell us what happened here and what that machine is for? <laughs> Fatui? Ha! <laughs> Fatui! Uh, those blockheads from the administration will regret it now! <laughs> That's what you get! For rejecting my research and forcing me to forcing me to to conduct my research on this deserted island. My precious. My precious. I think he's had a mental breakdown of some kind. Uh, why is he crying? Looks like he has a lot of pent-up emotions. You mocked me! And my precious invention. You you don't know anything about the future. You talking to me or are you talking about the Fatui administration? I don't think we've mentioned your machine in that sense. This is a crazy, crazy ass zoom in. Only my invention can help us conquer the world. <laughs> Sounds like we should destroy it, guys. Idiots. Such idiots. <laughs> Ow! Don't hit me. I won't blow up the lab again. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Uh, it, it definitely sounds like he suffered a mental break. It isn't just drunk. So they were physically abu words, abusing him to, to produce results. That's horrible. This man's gone insane. There's no way we can communicate with him. He wasn't like this when we first met him. It looks like the effects have grown worse, to the point of driving him mad. <laughs> my manuscript, my manuscript, only that can, can save, save. How convenient. He's written everything down for us. We don't need to talk to him. Manuscript, where is it? Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. <laughs> Aw, this poor guy. Ah, the price of genius. Fischl, don't yell at him. Yeah, he's, he's clearly suffering here. Hmm. Then I'll... Let me try. A uh, kind sir, look at me. Now tell me, where did you hide your manuscript? <laughs> no! No, don't force me to write a report! 
Go away! Uh, he's completely lost in his own imagination. Allow me. He is male. Sure. Please excuse me. Castle stands quietly for a while and throws the researcher over his shoulder and onto the ground. <laughs> oh! My butt! <sighs> my brain is finally starting to work again. It's, it's not a mushy mess anymore. Can you tell me where you put the manuscript? The manuscript. The manuscript is in the crack over there. Oh, finally! Otherwise, I was gonna have to blast some of my loudest rock and roll in his ears. I don't think that would have had the desired effect, Shenyun. Kazuha hesitated for a long time before making a move. He's so nice. Huh? Am I not comprehending it because it's early morning? Is there a translation error, or does it just literally not make any sense? It did insinuate that Kazuha stood there for a while before he did it. But I don't get why. It was really awkward. Why would you hesitate before doing it? I don't understand. He's destined for great. I, 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 I don't understand. If you were going to throw him over your shoulder and put his butt on the ground, why'd you have to hesitate before doing it? Just do it. Everyone, let's search the stone cracks nearby for the manuscript. Oh, he literally didn't point? Oh, that's unfortunate for you guys. Like rhyme and song at the summer reverie. 